Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Akin Olu Show. This is a uh, post-election show. We are going to be reflecting on the just-concluded elections. And on the show today, I have two politically conscious Christians. They may not necessarily see eye to eye on issues, but that's why they're on the show today. And I'm so glad to have them. They are both my eggbones, and I appreciate um, them being on the show today. I want to introduce yourself, sir, um, Pastor uh, Edward Samari. Please introduce yourself. Hello. I'm um, Pastor Edward Samari, and um, I'm, uh, I've been a resident here for over 20 years, and uh, I've participated in a uh, lot of elections. Uh, for a while, I uh, was first a registered Democrat, which is something that is uh, normal and common with immigrants. And then at a point, I shifted to the middle and I became uncommitted. But then uh, in this past election circle, I had to go and change my affiliation back to Democrat because I wanted to be able to participate where it matters, which is in the primaries. Without you being affiliated, you will not be able to determine. And actually, the real election actually begins from the primaries. So you went from Democrat to becoming independent? To become or, independent, yes. Or indifferent? I was independent for a very long time. Okay. And then you. Uh, so I've actually to... voted on both tickets, depending okay. on. So I don't consider myself just like a, a diehard Democrat. I consider myself a conscious voter who looks at the policies and the situation on ground and then also look at the character of the candidates. Thank you very much. I think you, Fachon, please introduce yourself to our audience. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Brother Akin, for having me on this show tonight. I'm Pastor Edward. Nice to meet you again, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for, for engaging with me and for engaging in such a wonderful manner. Thank you so much. I doff my hat to you, sir. You have pockets yes. and loads of respect from me, sir, to be very honest. Mm. Uh, you are a Democrat that I have loads of respect for, and that coming from me is not cheap at all, sir, as you might probably know. Uh, my name is Fortune Fashi, and I have been in this country for 24 years now. And uh, like Pastor Samori, when I got to this country, I was a Democrat. I was a died in the wool Democrat because I felt Democrats liked black people, loved immigrants. Yeah. Democrats were looking out for us and everything. But I'm also a Christian. I found over time that there was no specific day when I decided that I'm no longer a Democrat and became a Republican. I just found that over time, I naturally became a Republican, such that I couldn't even identify when I became a Republican. It's just that it happened naturally because my belief system just didn't align with those of the Democrat Party. And I, I will call myself a Republican because it's the only platform. The Republican platform is the platform that kind of identifies with my ideals, with my position on issues. But lately, for the past, say, 10 years or so, the Republican Party has become almost uh, the same thing as the Democrat Party. So I don't like it. I don't even like calling myself a Republican anymore. Mm. I would prefer to call myself a conservative. And the reason is this. This kind of segues into one of the questions that you asked. The reason is this. There was a time when Republicans kept losing elections. And the reason was that they were trying to work with the Democrat Party. You see Republicans beginning to change their mind on things like same-sex marriage, on things like all this LGBTQ stuff, because they think or they thought that was the way to win elections because they were being thrashed by the Democrat Party. And that was when I began to lose faith in the Republican Party as a party. That's the GOP. So I prefer to call myself a conservative and not a Republican. I am right of the Republican Party. So you can call me a far-right person. I wear that label proudly. Far right. Being on the right. Yeah, far right. Call me far right. But please, <laughs> don't mix it up with what the media calls the far right. Far right. Because okay. the, media is, the media in this country today is full of, they are full of it, so to speak. When you hear far right, the media make, makes you think there are people who want to kill black people. They are KKK. They mm. are, what else? They hate immigrants. I'm an immigrant myself. They... They all sorts of, there are all sorts of negative connotations to the far right. But being someone on the far right myself, I know what's true and what's false about the far right. So I am far right. I am right of the Democrat Party. And like I said, I wear that badge proudly. 
I'm not really a Republican. Call me a conservative. Good. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, I want to take it from where you left off, um, Pastor Samari. You've been here for 20 years. Um, no, no, no. I said over 20. So I said I've been here for 24 years. 24 years. So very similar. You both came in the same year. Wow. Okay. Have you seen on the political consciousness of immigrants um, increase over time? And that means if you've been here for 24 years, that means you've seen at least um, five um, presidential um well maybe let's say four 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 to five presidential elections have you seen the sentiment of immigrants shift over time the democrats are supposed to be the ones that are immigrant friendly and want you to come here and make a good life for yourself all inclusive has that always been the case or is that a recent strategy of the democratic party to bring in more um likely voters into their party How have you seen in your community, immediate community, have you seen the sentiments towards politics and both parties shift over time? The saying that the Democrats bring in people just for the vote is just a narrative that the Republicans have. The law that brought about a visa lottery was not passed by Democrats. So this country was built on immigrants and it continues to be immigrant friendly. Now, over time, the Democrats are more accommodating. Accommodating in the, in the sense that they are a lot more liberal. So they tend to allow or to attract people coming in into the country. But you realize that when people coming into the country at first, they are new. And yes, the Democrats gave them the opportunity. The Democrats has laws that favors them. They tend to lean towards Democrats. But as time goes on and people really settle in and now and then exhibit their 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 real self, those of us that are Africans, uh, if you bring any African into this into this place and you you look at our values and our culture, we will naturally be conservative as Africans based on our culture. But the fact that Democrats gives us the opportunity, so to say, the break to be able to come in, to be able to settle in, we want to favor them. But then as we settle in, especially when it comes to our belief system and the conservative nature of our community, then we begin to define ourselves and all of that. And you'll find out that this is the same, the, this issue with African is also the same thing with Spanish, who are mostly predominantly Catholics. Mm -hmm. So. When the belief system begins to set in, then it begins to move people away from, especially when the Democrats, you know, when they go far to the left, you begin to see that people begin to find middle ground to stand that, okay, we love you, we love your ideas, but no to some things. So I'll tell you something now. Uh, Pastor Fortune, thank you very much, and I'm very gracious for, you know. Endorsement. Yes, if I may call it that. I was thinking for <laughs> what to say. But I, I want to say one thing here. Hardly, even in a home where you have a father or a husband and wife, you don't agree on everything all the time. There are some things you will disagree on. But I believe the core strength of true democracy is we agree to disagree on some issues. We won't say it's my way or the highway. And there are some things with the Democrats that I don't agree with. And that is why, at a point, I moved. But what I cannot stand is the far right, where you have it all the way to the far end. And but I know you love me, sir. <laughs> I love you. I love you. And I just send you. And, and, and politics, you know, I love this. I love what we, what we do, whether here on this, on your TV show or even on our men's, uh, platform when we come. I mean, I mean, you, you just cannot but, you know, love, you know, the camaraderie and then, you know, the banter back and forth. And it's educating. It mm -hmm. is educating. So yeah, going back to your question. Yes. People tend to define themselves when they settle in. But majority of the of immigrants tend to lean Democrats. But as they settle in, then they define themselves and they realize, okay, this is who I am and this is who I want to be in this community. And at that, 
you begin to see some movement. Some people move, you know. I think the, the thing about politics is being able to find the center where we can work with ourselves. And I think that's what you are seeing a lot of immigrants doing. Yeah. Yes, there is a move, but most of them move into the center. You can fetch the same question, sir, to you. Uh, yes, sir. I quite agree with a lot that Pastor Somori has said, in the sense that uh, as an immigrant from Africa, and you find that, just like Pastor Somori said also, that most immigrants from Latin America and immigrants from America, even immigrants from the Caribbean, we all have conservative values, naturally, right. coming from our backgrounds. In fact, our backgrounds, our background, so to speak, dictates that we are conservatives naturally and uh, we but the thing is that when we come to this country we automatically almost automatically become democrats because we see a culture uh, that tells us that democrats are more the democrat party is more friendly towards us that the democrat party is more accommodating and that the democrat party is more willing to help us out you know like if you come in at the lower end of the of the economic spectrum you get what subsidized housing uh, and all the other things that people get when they, you know, the welfare state system, so to speak. Yeah. But on the other hand, you realize that coming from the kind of backgrounds that we come from, we are very hardworking people. African immigrants don't want welfare. We don't want the state giving us handouts for us to exist. There are people who have that mentality and it comes naturally to them and they vote Democrat naturally. I would rather be able, I would rather, I prefer a situation where I'm able to make money and take care of myself and my family rather than wait for government to give me subsidized housing, to give me week or food stamps and that sort of thing. But we come in here and the Democrat Party almost kind of convinces us that with the help of the media. And that's all we need that, to survive. Exactly. That that's all we need to survive. Under the Obama administration, I was amazed when there was a time when they were actually promoting these in political ads. They had people coming up and talking about the fact that if it weren't for weak or food stamps, it weren't for, for government assistance, I don't know where I would be today. Now, that sort of thing happens because the Democrat Party has to have a permanent underclass for it to survive. If that permanent yeah. underclass is not there, believe me, the Democrat Party won't survive. The reason I say that is this. Uh, was it Stalin that had a, a meeting with his top generals and he said, the way to control people is this. He brought a chicken, removed the, I think, removed the feathers from the chicken or something, and the chicken was cold and was almost dying, and then he gave it some food and a little bit of warmth. And the chicken began to see him as God, as, the, as his protector, as his provider. I think, personally, I think the policies of the Democrat Party keep people poor, keep people in a permanent underclass or a permanent lower class, a permanent poverty class that they can continue to subsidize life for. And thereby making them appreciate. I put that, I say that appreciate like this, what government does for them. Because if you were able to take care of yourself financially, if you were able to take care of yourself economically, and you are able to provide for your family, you are able to put food on the table, you don't want subsidized housing. You don't want weak. You don't want the welfare state taking care of you. In fact, you want government out of your business. But we have a class in America that has come to believe that the Democrat Party cares for people because they do all these things. And the Democrat Party deliberately makes it so that there is this class of people and they will always vote Democrat because they appreciate, so to speak, the help that the Democrat Party gives them. And to me, that is one of the most evil things you can do. It's just unconscionable that you, you, you need a permanent underclass in order to stay in power. Okay, so you've seen, have you seen, so when people come in, because of all the benefits, quote and unquote, they might lean Democrats, but, and have you also seen that their affiliations shift? Uh, please, over a bit louder, time? sir, I can hardly hear you. I said, have you also seen that their affiliations shift after some time of being in the country? Yes, sorry, I didn't get to that. For the most part, I will say a small percentage of them tend to shift affiliations when this, when, because it naturally, naturally comes to them that the fact that their ideals don't align with that, those of the Democrat Party, and they begin to shift. And I'm happy that it, it's, a, it's like that with the Hispanics as well. But the problem that I see lies in the fact that people want to set aside their moral convictions or their religious convictions for political expediency and still remain with the Democrat Party. Sometimes, I, I mean, I've heard so many people say things like, I don't agree with everything the Democrat Party does. If you don't agree with everything the Democrat Party does, you shouldn't be there. 
That's mm. my own opinion, because I think there are things that the Democrat Party does, some fundamental things that just cancels them out of my out of my affiliation, so to speak. Some things that, I mean, if there's a mention of something like this with you, everything else just is irrelevant to me. For instance, we all know the reason why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, the reason why God came down in the form of three men, himself and two angels, came down and rained sulfur, fire, and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah. What was the reason? It was pure and simple homosexuality, where men burned in lusts for other men. Uh, this was an abomination in the sight of the Lord. Now, this same abomination is being made the law of the land by a certain political party. There's no way I will be part of that party, no matter what we do, because to me, there is a fundamental breakup when you look at that issue. Even if they are going to do other things that supposedly helps me, mm. the fact that they take these things and they want to even impose it on the country as the law of the land, and that is part of the reasons why the Democrats lost. They have their agenda items, which are far left. Like someone said, the Democrat Party of today is not the Democrat Party of his grandfather. They have become so far to the left that they don't listen to Americans anymore. And that is why people get into this country, they see the Democrat Party for what it really, what it, for what it has become, not what it was. Because if the Democrat Party had been what it was originally, I probably would have remained a Democrat. But what the Democrat Party has become today is something I cannot be part of, mm. say from like 15 years ago. Because they have become a party that believes in government power. They don't think you are smart enough to make decisions on your own. They think they should make decisions for you. And they think that their policy items must go down well with you, whether you like it or not. I mean, how can you place zero point? Is it zero point one? Pastor Samuel, you, you have all the statistics. Unfortunately, I don't. About 0.1 or 1.0% 1 .0 of the population above everybody else. I mean the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. You place them above everybody else. Instead of you to define a third sporting class for them, for instance, you say, no, you want the boys who feel like girls to compete with girls. I don't want that. I have a daughter. I don't want anybody. She plays volleyball. I don't want a boy on her team. Oh, sorry, on any team competing with her. The same thing with using bathrooms. I don't want any boy who says he feels like a girl today going into the same bathroom with my daughter. But the Democrats feel that this is those are the right things to do. And they tell you to your face that they are going to defend it. They call it uh, gender-affirming care. They tell you that they are going to defend it, and they want you to be fine with it. Now, I know that a lot of Democrats do not agree with these things, and that is part of the reason Kamala Harris lost this election. A lot of Democrats do not agree with all these LGBTQ things. And hopefully, from the results of these elections, the Democrat Party has realized that. I'm hoping they have realized that. So okay. yes, our political affiliations tend to shift when we get into this country and we see what the Democrat Party has become. It seems like it's both our political affiliations shifting and also the Democratic Party has also evolved. It has also evolved yeah. from what it was 20 years ago. It has evolved far left. And so that's, that's uh, probably ex is... That explains um, some of it as well. You said something during while, while you were talking that some people petition their morals to be part of the Democratic Party. Are you saying that anybody who is a Democrat cannot be a true Christian? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying at all. Okay. In fact, look at my Pastor Sonori here. Right. He's one Christian that I have loads of respect for. But the thing is that what someone like Pastor Somori and a few others that I know, what they say to me is that I'm a one-issue voter. And that is not that is not the case. I don't vote on one issue. There are so many issues with the Democrat Party that, that go against my convictions or my, my deeply held convictions. It's not just about LGBTQ. It's LGBTQ. It's abortion. It's about um, telling people what that good is evil and evil is good. It's about so many other things that don't come to my head immediately, but there's a lot of things. It's not just one issue. Now, I understand the fact that some people might want to say, okay, that is just one of the things with the Democrat Party, and there are several other things that they like, e.g. they are pro-immigrants. And fine, that is fine with you. If you see that as just one issue that is even minor, and it's not going to change your affiliation with the Democrat Party, that is fine. I accept that. So not you're still a Christian. 
it's just that that issue is not big in your in your in your opinion maybe it's not really a defining issue with you mm. so that's fine but for me a couple of issues are defining issues with me such that if you if 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 you're in that if if the party supports those issues i'm out that is why i cannot be a democrat but i know that there are people who are democrats because there are so many other things they agree with with the democrat party while other issues they don't consider as being important so it's okay. uh, you, so, you can be a democrat and be a christian will you let me say something to yes i wanted to respond to that and also in with your response um also let's talk about um is it possible for us to be on this opposing sides quote and unquote um, politically and also be you know christians and 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 oh, true believers also, but have yeah, different course. and and how do we do that how do we do because these days what we see is that many people have their emotions wrapped up in politics and that's what they want us to do they want us to get our emotions wrapped up and so it becomes very challenging for us to see ci to eye as brothers and sisters we, we demonize each other how do we avoid doing that and still have these different political positions and also respond well, to what you said. That is the type of policy, politics we have in Africa, but not here in America. Here in America, you, your next door neighbor, you can be one party, your next door neighbor is another party and you both have different yes signs right on your lawn, but you know, you still come out and you know, you're, you're, you're packing the leaves together and you're still discussing all that stuff. I think I consider it to be foolishness for people to so much personalize politics to the extent that, you know, they go after themselves or whether fighting or even like you see in Africa, killing themselves is, is just barbaric and should, should never, never, never be done in any, any, any. I mean, we, we, we play sports and the good sportsmanship is you win, you rejoice and the one that loses, you know, they, they come in, they shake hands with you. You win today, but tomorrow is another time. That's that's the. If you don't have that policy, then sorry, you 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 are the loser. Now, coming back to rebuttaling on uh, Pastor Fortune's thing. Here's what I will say. Yeah, LGBT is not something that I particularly endorse, but it's not the only issue. And if the Republicans are so serious about it, are you aware that? July 17th, there is a guy, I, I, I looked uh, for him, Rick Grenell, spoke at RNC convention, and he is a known LGBTQ person. Why did the Republican allow him if they so much hate the LGBTQ thing? So what I'm, my thing is this, and this is the reason why I, I, I don't stand with Republican and I can't. I hate hypocrisy. I think it's hypocrisy if you say, hey, we hate this thing. God doesn't like it. I don't like it. But yet you bring them in to speak at your convention. Why? Because you need their votes. Yeah? So that I, I don't like. And listen, we talk about abortion. And all the states passing this, you know, zero abortion tolerance and all of that. They do it. They say it. But majority of them... We don't know their wives. You want to tell me they live a celibate life all this all their life? I don't want to mention them. I can I can mention a couple of Republicans. Do they live a celibate life? Now, if you are not married, if you want to talk ab about abortion, talk about adultery and fornication as well. That is the first sin. The sin doesn't begin with abortion. It is why the majority of the people commit abortion because they have premarital. Pardon me to say, sex. So that in itself should be where the the rule should start. That okay, let's end this. If you do that, I will heal you. I will clap for you. But if you are not doing that, but only demonizing the woman who got raped and say because you were raped, you have to carry this baby, and that baby will be a source of you know displeasure and unhappiness and depression for you the rest of your life. And that's is right. And then going to the Bible, God specifically said there are six things he hates. And he said, in fact, seven are abomination. He didn't mention homosexuality. He didn't mention abortion. He mentioned a feat that is ready and ready to, 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 to cause confusion, to cause division. 
The Bible talk about, talked about it. A mouth that talks, that speaks lies. It says God hate them. And these things happen. We don't, as Christians, we are not. So I think, and, and that is where my own issues with the Republicans are, that I can't stand you when you tell lies. I can't stand you when you tend to be hip hypocrite. I can't, as in, as a party now, I'm talking, I'm not. When you rush to, it says, when you share innocent blood, but majorly is lies and putting, bumping two heads together. If you literally look at the, the meaning in Proverbs uh, uh, 6. Are the Republicans doing this? And if it's the Christian value, did they take this portion out of the Bible? That is the reason why we should be a lot more liberal to accommodate ourselves. Jesus said, if you know you have not committed anything, be the first to cast stone on Mary. All of them walked away. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, yes, we have some of these things that, no, I can't. I don't want a male guy to go into my daughter's bathroom and say, today I'm a man, I'm a man, and then tomorrow I'm a woman. No, I want, and that is the problem the Democrats have, because they have no liver and they cannot stand on issue. They want to be everything for everybody. No, you can't be everything for everybody. You should define your stand and stick to it. And when it comes to LGBTQ, they have no definition, they have no liver, and they can't tell where they stand. It's an issue for some of us. But there are also other bigger issues on the other end. Can we have a party that, you know, says, come as you are, which is what the church should be. Come as you are. But when you come, we will tell you the truth. Don't tell us you came and we cannot speak. No, we will tell you the truth. And the goal of the church is to convert sinners. We will attempt to convert you. If we can't, if you won't stand it, run away from the country. That that is that is where I believe we should be. So again, my issue with the Republicans is don't be hypocrites. Don't have double standards and one standard for when you like it and another. No. Make it something that is accommodating. Okay. Listen, this thing is not good, but come, we will show you why it is not good. Not kill them. Okay. And as a group, yes, we should, we can live together. And the way we live together is through, you know, accommodation. We have to accommodate ourselves and have to be prepared to work together on issues. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. So I think there is, yes, you, 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 you will respond, but, but you will respond. But I just want to say okay. that. The accusation of hypocrisy, there is plenty to go around. That is, the Good Republicans basis, can also have many other things to accuse Democrats of hypocrisy on. So I don't want exactly. us to go back and forth on that. It, it, there is no, that may not be the best use of our time. Because, I mean, <laughs> just many things. Like, easy one that comes to my mind now is, okay, Biden is forgiving student loans, but you still keep giving the student loans to 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds. If student loans are very bad and it's destructive for their future, shouldn't we talk about fixing that first? I mean, it's it's like a parallel to the, the question you raise about, okay, if you are going to legislate against abortion, well, also legislate against marital sex or sex outside. Of, and that is just impossible, right? I've not okay. seen any society where you, you even begin to think about um, policy around legislating about what people do um, around their sexuality. It's, it's very difficult. So the, the challenge of hypocrisy, there is enough to go around. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you, I, there was something I missed that I didn't uh, touch on which is saying that oh, the Democrats tend to just give people and make them stay there with some of these policies in terms of weak and all of this. See, even, even the student loan thing, the idea of the student loan is, is just like the housing issue. If you were here in early 2000s, like year 2000, those that came in even before then, to buy a house before the legislated FHA thing, to buy a house, you must have 20% of the cost of the house to put down in addition to your closing cost. And you realize that there are a lot of us that will not have been become homeowners today because majority of those people that were buying were buying on old money passed down from their parents. And that is the same thing with student loans. 
If you want to do that, then it means the minority will not go to school because they just do not have the generational wealth that will go around. But what they are trying to do is, yeah, I'm not saying everybody should live through weak or whatever, but I'm sure the three of us on this line, I'm sure at some point when it was expedient, we benefited from it. But after that, we left. What is bad is you get it and you stay there. You don't want to leave it. I, I cannot benefit from it when I had my first kid and I was only making, what, 17000 and per year, and I had a wife and a kid, I benefited from that free milk. It helped me. But once my status changed, I moved on. But And I also know that there are people that stay in that system, they want to milk the system, and don't understand that you know you, you have a life and you should live. What we need to do is actually educate people, change their mindsets. And that is what we are lacking. It is not the program. The program is good for people coming in, but you set a time. You set a time. You come in, you are in there for a year or two years. If you're still not out of it, then you have a problem. And then we need to deal with that bigger issue. That I will say, yeah, if I can speak that to power with the Democrats or with the democratic states that offers these things, I'll tell them, you don't encourage poverty. Okay. I am on the same page with you on that. Yes. I'll let you speak, uh, to Fortune. Just uh, for, the, for the record, I never benefited from WIC. I, I don't even know um, how to... Not, be, not to say that those who benefited from it... Are, um... well, if you don't benefit from WIC, let me ask you. Okay. You own a house today. Did yes. you put down 20%? No, I did not. That is part of the program. It's, it's part of the program. Th these programs are not just... Th 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 there are different programs. WIC is not the only thing. There okay. are different programs legislated to help bridge the gap, the income gap, the wealth gap. But 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 those programs, those programs are not Democrats. It's not only Democrats that put forward those programs. If even if even the weak and all the uh, social um, programs that they have, those programs don't stop when we have a Republican president. It they does continue. Not. Exactly. So, oh. so, so, so we are not we are not uh, harmonizing, or we're just saying that people who take advantage of those they are there for a reason. They are there for no, a reason. There are some people I know, some Nigerians mm. that still, despite living in Martian, will go and take a part time job to show a little paycheck just so that they could get that. See. And those type of programs, I mean, that is where you you know you don't want. People. I mean, there was a, a Nigerian woman who was uh, prosecuted in Arlington. I don't know. You, it was on the news some two, three, four years ago. The husband is a lawyer making millions of dollars. And she forged her papers to have her son eat free meal at school. That's, so there that's are people ridiculous. That stay, yeah, very ridiculous. People stay in this program because they just feel, see, this system is built on trust. And the thing is, come in, get help, and get out of it. But People come in and then they see the loophole and they stay there and continue to milk it. That is not good. So on that, I will say, yes, we are on the same page. But don't have it at all. No, come on. You are okay today. But before you get there, you got some help. And that is what this is for some of these people. Yes, and you are going to respond. The good fortune, trust me, you will respond. So those programs are necessary. We are not saying they are not necessary. Yes, we need a mindset shift. We need to make sure that people are not... Um, are not stuck in those in that cycle of poverty or cycle of dependency. But we are saying that the Democrat Party seems to have weaponized those things and they want to keep you there. And that's, I, I think that's what the Kofotri is saying that um, exactly. is, is not good. So I'm saying that there is inconsistencies. There are inconsistencies on both sides. So just like yes. you, you identified the inconsistency on the Republican, in the Republican Party and some of their policies, there are also inconsistencies in the Democrat Party as well. But so, at, so, a, at a different uh, level. All right, that's where you need to respond, sir. Um, can fortune. Yes, sir. You see, let me start by saying that, one, these two political parties that we're looking at, the, the Democrat Party and the Republican Party, neither is perfect. Okay. 100% with perfect. you. Particularly to a Christian. Mm. The Republican Party is full of its own 
things that I disagree with. But the thing is that I disagree almost one hundred percent with the Democrat Party. Okay, but you said earlier that now, if if you don't, if someone does not agree with everything they are doing, the, the Democrat Party, why are they there? You said that earlier. So how come you are in the Republican you Party and you don't agree with no, them one hundred percent? Not with everything. Not with everything. I said with some fundamental things. Some fundamental things that go against the grain of your faith. There are some fundamental things that the Democrats do that that tells me that I cannot belong to this party. One and um, Pastor Somari, you you spoke you spoke quite a bit earlier on your past your previous comments, and you kind of segued into conflating the church with the Democrat Party. No, I was referring to the church. I was referring to Christianity. No, I was just saying that if we want to say Christianity, then we should. So you go ahead. Pastor Fortune, are you aware of the statistics of the people getting assistance by race that white by far outnumbers black and Hispanic? Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. And majority of those whites are not necessarily Democrats. Sir, sir, in my building... seven percent of the recipients of the program are white. Are Whereas not... the black people is only 26%, Hispanic, 16%, Asian... Less than three percent or three percent. No, I have not. First of all, uh, you're 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 getting me wrong, sir. I have not said that Democrats want black people to be a permanent underclass. I said they want a permanent underclass: black, white, blue, or green. They just mm. need a permanent underclass that will be getting. Well, most of them are Republicans, though. All that, <laughs> really? Yeah, sir. If you look at the Hispanic community, most of them look at the statistics of the vote that was just cast. Trump got the lowest Hispanic votes. His, his Hispanic votes were lower than uh, Biden, than Kamala's. His black votes was lower than Kamala's. So how could it? How could they? But he had performed his last two elections. He's, he's yes, yes, because his percentage he now. Opening their I eyes. increased more than yeah. what it did in 2026. Exactly, sir. Exactly, sir. People, because people are beginning to people's eyes are getting opened to the fact that uh, the Democrat Party is not it. Well, the, the the Republican Party is not totally it either. But the, the fact of the matter is that it is better you vote Republican than vote Democrat. And if you look at this situation that we are in right now, you see that Trump got what we call a landslide victory. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so in this case, there's I mean, nothing like. He didn't win the Let's, vote. Okay. Okay, sir. Before we start, yeah, before before we start going, uh, yeah, that's that's the next place we are going to. The question is, why did Trump win these elections? Why why did Trump win? And after that, I will ask you why Kamala lost. Let's start with um do you want to start, sir? Yes, let me tell you why Trump won the election and Kamala lost. Two reasons. One is the obvious one that is in front of everybody. And the second one is the subtle one that nobody is talking about. Okay. So I'll tell you the okay. obvious one. The okay. obvious one is people say economy, economy, economy. Yeah, the price of fuel was lower during Trump and now it's more higher. And that is the narrative everybody believed. And that's what all of them voted. for. That is the one. But the main reason that is the subtle one. Is because Americans are not ready for a female leader. Right. And simple. Right. We are still so misogynistic that we right. do not want a female leader. Whether it's white, <laughs> Caucasian, 100% or mixed, we are not ready. We don't say that outside, though, but that is the reason. Wow. Okay. Pastor. Please go ahead, sir. Oh, can I come in now? Yes. yes. Simple. Okay. <laughs> It's India. We are talking of America. Anyway, we've had female leaders in countries that are not as open-minded as the USA. America has more female governors. Uh, or more female regional leaders, let me put it that way, since we're looking at worldwide, than most countries on earth. Sir, America has been ready for a female president since Hillary Clinton. That is why when Trump won the election against Clinton, it was a close 
It was a close. It wasn't the close. Contest. It wasn't the close. It's exactly like this. It was six. It was. Hillary well, won the the popular he, he, vote he, he, then. According to, the, according, according to the Democrat Party, sir, Trump did not won the popular vote. The pop- Clinton won the popular vote, and Trump won the electoral vote. So how can America not be ready for a full president? If Kamala Harris got to the point where she was able to compete with Donald Trump. How can America not be ready for a female president? Yeah, so that, really. that, that argument, I don't agree with it. But let me tell you why Trump won this election, sir. The reason Trump won this election, if I'm to sum it up in one sentence, and I will explain, is this. Americans had the opportunity to see the Democrat Party unfettered, unleash itself on the country. They saw what the Democrat Party can do when they have free reign to lead. That was why Trump won this election. I will explain. Uh, the Democrat Party was desperate. They were desperate to get Donald Trump out because Donald Trump was draining the swamp in D.C. and they did not want that. Drain no swamp. And he was part of the swamp himself. Part of the swamp is what we are having, what we have going on now, where they are sending trillions of dollars to Ukraine, and they don't want any accountability. When it was brought up for votes that uh, they should be, for some summary, you know more about uh, finance, financial things in government than I do, but I'm sure you are aware of the fact that when they brought it up for votes that the money should be accounted for, we should see how the money is being spent. The Democrats killed that bill. They did not want any accountability. That is the swamp because the Democrats are making a killing. They are making money out of the war in Ukraine. Sir, can you imagine a situation where we have two countries at war, two major countries, a war that could easily spiral into a third world conflict, a war that big, Russia against another country, against another country that Russia would have decimated in months, if not for Western support. And Western support itself, meaning that that conflict can easily, could easily become something else. Now it's Russia and North Korea, all under Biden. And then what our president had always said about that conflict and the U.S.'s stance on that conflict is, we will support Ukraine for as long as it takes. As long as it takes for what? To beat Russia? Can, will Ukraine never beat Russia? No. <laughs> we know that it's not going to happen. So when you say, I mean, you can, if you pull it up now, you'll see Biden, Biden repeated that, that, that sentence so many times. That is America's official position on this Ukraine war. We will support Ukraine for as long as it takes. And the funny thing is that Biden will not tell you that as long as it takes for what? He only says for as long as it takes, meaning that we will continue to steal America's money, we will continue to steal America's resources for as long as it takes, because that is the the reason they're still fighting that war. Because if we had any common sense in the leadership of this country, we wouldn't be saying that we will support a country to fight for for as long as it takes. We'll be saying, let's end this war so that people can stop killing each other. But we have a Democrat Party whose official position is that we will keep Ukraine fighting for as long as it takes. And they won't tell you, for, uh, they, won't tell you they, they have not given us the end game of the Ukraine war because there's no end game. They just want it to continue until... For it, well, for can, it, it be Russia to withdraw back to their 1991 border. They, they have not said so. They are just saying for, they will support you. It's, it's a no I should be the end okay. game. If, if, if you are trying, if that were the end game, are they giving Ukraine the kind of support that will push Russia back? They cannot give Ukraine that kind of support because if they dare to give Ukraine that kind of support, we'll be fighting, we'll have to put boots on the ground. And they know that. And there, there is no amount of support that you can give Ukraine that will make that that can make them push Russia back. No. And right now, Russia has brought a third party into the conflict, North Korea. Now we have Ukraine fighting against Russia and North Korea. Okay. I want us to come back to local politics. Okay. Why did you did you think Donald Trump won? Why Donald Trump won? Yes, I said we had uh, we segued from my uh, statement that we had an unfettered Democrat party. Okay. Yes. Now. Another reason, the, the, breaking that down, Donald Trump won because, one, we saw what the Democrats will do when they have unfettered power. There are no guardrails. They don't obey any laws. They don't obey the Constitution. They don't follow the Constitution. They just do whatever they like because they don't give a hoot what the American people think. That was one. Secondly, the whole world saw what the Democrats have been doing to Donald Trump. At this point, I can't imagine anybody still thinking that, one, that Donald Trump committed all those crimes that he was being tried for. The judge, Tanya Choktan, just gave a 
Jack Smith approved all his uh, requests to pause the case and, you know, why? Why not continue the case? No, you can't, you can't prosecute a sitting president. You can't can prosecute he's a, 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 sitting sitting president. a sitting president. Yeah, he will be in a few months. So no, they can send him to jail now if they want. Let them do it. Just can't elect him. So, no, so that we know that they are serious about this case, that Trump committed these crimes. I mean, they send him to jail before he's inaugurated. It's not but possible. But we know no. what the reasons were. The reasons they are dropping it right now is because they know that it was political interference and they could not, they have failed. They know that they have failed. Okay, the other case in New York, look at what they did. We had a case where I don't think it has ever happened before, where before a judge hears the case, he gives a pretrial ruling, seizing all of Trump's properties in New York. And then the media backlash forces him to, to recant. And then they now went on with their bogus case. They allowed all sorts of nonsense. Please forgive my language. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. They allowed all sorts of, uh, I mean, the people that he is supposed to have stolen from, they came in and said, we will do business with this man again if he wants to do business with us. Nobody lost any money. Nobody lost anything. He did not defraud anybody. He did not defraud anyone. And the banks testified that they didn't lose anything. They are, they are willing to do business with him again. But they, they, they went ahead mm -hmm. and found him guilty of everything. They had and to now say they they a convicted felon because they were hoping that America would refuse to vote for a so-called convicted felon. You see, so people saw the Democrat Party in action. How the Democrat Party weaponizes government against its opponents. Obama started it when, no, well, not Obama. Previous presidents had done things as bad. But Obama, you know, continued with it when he weaponized the IRS against his, his political enemies. But as usual, in fact, somebody came into my, store, my office the other time. And I, we brought up this issue and we we're talking about it. And his response was like, oh, no, 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 no. Don't say that. Obama won't come on by. Obama won't come on by. I will translate. Obama knew nothing about it. Obama knew nothing about it. I said, sir, the thing is that you guys worship Obama so much, you are ready to forgive him for anything. You are ready to absolve him of anything. Obama weaponized the IRS against his political enemies. We all know that. Look at what Biden is doing. Of course, no, Biden has no hand in it. It is just Mary Garland and his justice department saying that Trump is a criminal and prosecuting Trump. Pastor, right? That is it. Trump committed so many crimes. He deserves to be prosecuted. He deserves all the 150-something uh, investigations, all the uh, convictions, and all the cases trying to destroy him, trying to seize his properties, uh, calling him Hitler. And of course, we all know what that entails. When you call someone Hitler, you call him a fascist. What you are telling your, your supporters indirectly is kill him. Take him out. If you are crazy enough, kill this man. He is Hitler. He's a fascist. And yeah. we all know that there are people who are crazy yeah. enough to try that. And that was after they had made the first attempt to take Trump out, which didn't work. Come on. And I'll go ahead and tell you what that first attempt was. That first attempt was when the FBI went to raid Maralago. The object was to get into a gunfight and kill Donald Trump. I'll tell you why I think Come so. On. Because, yes, sir, you can say that. I don't agree with you. The, the reason I say so is this. They had all the security cameras in Maralago shut down. Why? Because they were going to do something bad. Okay, so the so the FBI did not identify uh, itself. The the FBI agents that went uh, to Maralago did not have all that FBI branding that they have on their chest. They did not have it. Why? Because they were looking for a situation. In my mind, they were looking for a situation where the Secret Service will say, "You are not the FBI because we we don't recognize you as the FBI. We don't see the branding of FBI on your apparel or what well, you're So I think I think and that's a little bit of a stretch. That can result in some. Yes. Yes. I think it's, that's a stretch. I'm calling it a bit of a stretch, but I know that that was the aim. And then, then that's... thirdly, before they even went there, they made requests that the, the Secret Service had to call Trump wherever he was and said they are requesting that, and Trump just said, Look, "Go ahead, let them do anything." Because it's like he had an idea what was about to happen. And he gave them unfettered access. They we were even looking at Mel Melania's underwear, searching oh. every nook and cranny. Yes, they did. They did, sir. If you're not aware, say so. These are just uh, Republican narrative. No, sir. It is not Republican narrative. It is the fact of the matter. But you see, okay. the thing is that such stories are crushed on CNN and MSNBC. You don't hear it anywhere else. Because for the most part, we don't get the other side of the story. Well, were they, they looking for drugs or were they looking for money? Money? If they are looking for papers. Not aware of they're looking for papers under the, uh, the underwear now. Did, if they say that, you won't. Did, sir. 
They looked for papers everywhere. They searched every nook and cranny of Maralago. And sir, when they went to search Joe Biden, why didn't they do that? And which other president have they gone to search like that? Let's, can I agents go that with, no, no, no. Let me. Where agents go with guns drawn to go and search the residence of an ex president of the USA? It is not done anywhere. Even if that sort of thing were to, to happen, Biden should call that department to order and say, no, you don't do that to an ex-president. Biden should have called them to order and say, no, you don't, because Biden himself is a president. He wouldn't want that to happen to him when he leaves office. And Mary Garland should not have allowed anybody under the DOJ to do such a thing to a president, to an ex-president of the United States of America. It is wrong, it is unconscionable, but they did that to him. They called him Hitler, called him a fascist, and two attempts were made physically to shoot him, which failed, and then we saw all the things that they did. And they decided republic. When you see all that happening, you will know that, yes, God has a purpose for this man. It is part okay. of the reasons that Trump won. Because there are so... Look, in fact, there was this guy, some black men they were that were interviewed and they said the reason they are going to vote for Trump this time around is he, because he's a brother, a brother. When they say he's a brother, what they meant was the fact that he's a black man. He's been chased by the system. The cops mm -hmm. after him. Uh, the DOJ is after him. That makes him a black man. In in the I, I don't know. I say this with a bit of humor, meaning that he's in the the same situation that black people find themselves in. Yeah. So 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 you're saying that. One of the reasons Trump won is the execution the, that he received and the electorate, the electorate identified with him and voted for him. Exactly. So, so that, that is that's, one that's more great. Reason. That's the second let reason. How many more reasons do you have? Let me go to my third reason, sir. My third reason is that people saw Kamala Harris, ah, for God's sakes, how can anybody want that woman to be president? He's what? been vice what? president for four years. Year. Nobody voted for her. Yeah, she's the vice president for four years. And the only assignment that she was given uh, to take care of the border, she failed miserably. One, vice president was not uh, elected. She was appointed by Joe Biden. And yeah. she's a DEI appointment, diversity, equity, and inclusion. They wanted to include a black woman in the, in the uh, Biden administration. And that was why she was chosen. It wasn't about merit. It wasn't about the fact that she has achieved anything or that she has any leadership skills. The woman can hardly make one complete sentence. And oh, we, have wow. it, we have seen, we saw it with our own two eyes. Just Google her a bit. The you woman saw it with your two eyes. eyes. Did, you, did you watch the debate? To offer. Yes, the debate that we all know. The, we, uh, against well, Trump. So she can't make a sentence and she blocked Trump. The debate. Well, she won the debate because... I don't know. If you and then you're saying she can make a sentence. Come on, yes. man. Did you see, did you see the things that came out after the debate? Probably that, you didn't, sir. Probably you didn't. That they, they prepped him. He was him. Trump. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I think it was a... Uh, he was not the one debating Trump. She's a lawyer for heaven's sake. Hold on, sir, because if you look at every other interview she had after the debate, when she was mm -hmm. herself, she couldn't answer any question. She couldn't make one straight so sentence. who was Even debating Trump? CNN and... It was a, it was a body double. And when C CNN and uh, other stations tried to make softball interviews for her, she still couldn't say anything that made sense. At Oprah's show, she embarrassed herself because at those places, she was herself, unlike so, so, debating so Trump. I think it's okay to say that she was well prepared for the debate and she beat Trump based no. on her preparation. No, that's 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 a simple enough. I think that's a that's a simple enough explanation. <laughs> you don't have to say that you know it was a double or somebody else debating. But in really, her, she was being coached with her earring. Yeah, well, we don't, the, we don't have any some Fox News that the earring she was wearing. A speaker and somebody was speaking to okay okay so they gave her anyway let me ask you a question can i ask you one question sir? one question for you okay you know you said she has not done anything i mean that's trump's narrative on her she's dumb she's dumb. no that is but you narrative. realize that she is a lawyer and she has won heavy cases like, case against she won in california she won a case against all the big banks made them to pay billions of dollars in restitution or during for the uh, housing crisis he won rico case against racketeering both drugs and human racketeering across border and he won he took them to court and he won 
So who mm -hmm. was speaking in court for her during those times? Those ones are not uh, uh, sir, ABC court. Sir, look at uh, Leticia James. She won against Trump now. How many times did she appear in court? They have lawyers. These departments have smart lawyers. You don't go there and do the work yourself. Kamala Harris did not do the work herself. She oh, did not speak. Asked, if you look at these cases, you see that she hardly, probably, hardly ever appeared in court because she was not a personal prosecutor. She was not a person. She was a DA. That means a department. Yeah, that whole department that was a criminal prosecutor before Trump's she became a DA. It was her achievement in prosecuting criminals. No, sir. Not her to because it was. She has no achievements to boast of. Everybody knows it. It wasn't yeah, I mean, achievement about just like saying, you know, Trump also was saying well, she didn't pass her bar exam because she failed the bar exam one time and the second time she passed it. If she could pass California bar exam, you can tell that, that in itself is an achievement, sir. So, okay. thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I just put on the screen. I don't know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Okay. This is um, what the Associated, Associated Press uh, is saying that decided or drove the election um, the issues that drove the election this year um, the economy was more important than it was in 2020 39 percent immigration 20 percent that was five times more important than it was in 2020 by this chart that we have here all those personal you know, argument against Trump and all of that. Yes, that might I have think seemed... the two reasons. The that, big that might one have, yeah, and then the unspoken one opening. That might have seeped into the sentiment of many people. That might have seeped into the sentiment of people. Oh, they are persecuting Trump, and oh, and you know, when you survive an assassination attempt, too. I mean, your stock kind of grows as well. So all of that persecution, yes, that might have, and the lack of an a concrete agenda. If the Democrat had had an agenda for the economy, if Kamala Harris was able to divorce herself from the Biden administration, which was an impossible task anyway, given a hundred days of campaign, you can't do that. Given a hundred days of campaign, it's just impossible to do that. But I wanted to talk about this immigration, about the point that Pastor you know, Samarim you know, made. there was something he said that I would have just loved to say one word to. Yes, talking sir. about weaponization of department and all of this. I don't know how you would say he won because that was done to him, but he was campaigning on what he was going to do, that he was going to use all of these people and deal with some of these political opponents, like categorically saying that. And then we knew, we know he did that in his past. James Comey, Andrew McCabe, who he made Jeff Sessions to fire on a Sunday night, a day before he will be able to get his full benefits. We knew he did that during his own term. And even Jeff Sessions himself, after all said and done, he believed he didn't do well. He fired him. The man decided to come back to the Senate. He killed his political career and buried it at sea. <laughs> yes, because Jeff Sessions is the one that provided the covering for Mueller to do all that Russia hoax thing on, on Trump. And the whole Mueller story was, was covered by Jeff Sessions. to weaponize anything. Oh, you see, <laughs> sir, even during, 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 Trump's presidency, during Trump's presidency, the government was weaponized against Trump because Trump came in as an inexperienced politician. When, when he came in, he should have fired the, whole, the top brass of the bureau. Let me finish, sir. Let me, let me finish, sir. He came in inexperienced uh, from a businessman to politician, and mm -hmm. he came in inexperienced. Most, most part, when a new president comes in, change the bureaucracy, but Trump didn't. He had people who were more loyal, Democrat Party, than him. The first time we had a presidency where every head of the bureaucracy was talking about how they were, were going to disobey if he gives any kind of that is not, without him even giving any such order. Jeff Sessions accused himself during the whole Mueller thing and gave Mueller the go-ahead to prosecute and destroy the president that appointed him. It was weaponization of government by In Jeff Sessions. Of fairness, oh, that no, is what is hold on, let me, let me finish. If that wasn't the case, remember that when there was a rumor that Trump was going to fire um, himself, I think, Yes. Chance now stepped in again and said, if Mueller is fired, he will resign. But I thought you recused yourself. Why not? Why 
is stay recused. You recuse yourself from the whole thing. That means that sessions Mula the the, 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 the the an open check to to destroy Trump, which he he almost did because the whole investigation up to the Trump president from, from doing a, a lot of things. And then when Trump was going to take action, he stepped back in from a case that he had recused himself from. Not still recused. So to me, Jeff Sessions was a deep plant by the Democrats in Trump's uh, administration. Yeah. Because if he weren't, how can you be attorney general and you allow that kind of hoax to go on and that much money against the president that you have, has Mary Garland done? In any case, he he did, Joe Biden. He, 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 all he, he has done is he did not recuse himself. Also, hmm? that's the essence of especially all he has done is all he has done is protect Joe Biden. See, when you are and remember that when, when Mary Garland was going to launch the whole uh uh uh, uh what's it called uh what's this man's name the man the uh, Smith. But what Jeff said? Uh, what uh, Mary Garland? He said now that Trump has declared a run for the presidency, that he thinks it is time for him to launch an investigation into da 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 da, to the speech that he gave the, when he was doing it. I mean, the 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 thing. See, we all when when the Biden's son Hunter was indicted, I didn't hear any Republicans say it was <laughs> under the indictment. He didn't say it was a witch hunt. At the point, he they couldn't run away from it. They did everything they could to protect Hunter. How? How? Didn't you hear about the 41 intelligence chief that signed a letter saying that the whole laptop thing was Russian disinformation? Was it not? Did, did people... Uh, was it not? The, was the laptop it not real? The, the, guy, the guy that put it together, they did not confess? What? what they prosecuted Hunter for? It's not about the laptop. It's about having... A, Gone when he's supposed not to have one. Yes, that was what they said. Oh, went into in it, order it, to, it, it, to it, the whole laptop thing was a hoax. Sir, like the how thing was completely true. There are even pictures on the internet. It was a, online. Okay, the, was, the guy the came contents of that laptop. He made it up just because he wanted to seek favor from the Republican. It was a hoax. Yes. What he was prosecuted on was totally something different. Tax. And all of that, nothing yes, to do with yes, all of this thing they talked about. And yet, the father allowed him to be prosecuted. He never said this is a, a witch hunt or all of this that we are hearing from the right. Oh, they did. They I want us. I want us. Revenge. They screamed all over the place that it was revenge. That it was a witch hunt. It was revenge. They were going after the president's son for political purposes. Oh, they said okay. it all over the place. Okay, so I, I want us to 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 move on to the to the closing stages of of this. And the question that I think may be on the minds of many people: Yes, we know why Trump won. We know why Iris lost. I mean, others could say that she didn't have the chance to so put together a formidable fight against in three Donald months. Trump. Uh, he did well in three months. Yes, I mean, uh, and. The converse of that is no matter how long you gave her, she couldn't have been a formidable candidate, no matter how long she had. Don't, 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 that. don't say that. Because I mean, I'm just saying that... A lot of people can't say they don't know her. Yes, a lot of people they don't can't know say her. they don't know her. Yes. But you just so, said she was vice president for how many years? For four so, years. So we should have known you, especially especially if, if you are, if, if you are not in the ambition. Well. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Is that we know her too well. That was the thing. We know her too well. We've, we've seen her failures. We've seen how they called her the border czar and she couldn't do anything. She, could, she didn't Imagine do you ask some, some, some people now who was the vice president under Trump, they will tell you they don't know. Vice president is really nothing. They are under the ground. All right. So now the question of, back to this chart, it's saying that the economy drove the election and immigration. Those are the two primary things that drove the election. Yes, we're talking about all these other fringe matters. So, Jenny, I mean, I'm not sure that I was a primary driver in this election. I thought it's a soft tool. It's a soft tool one, but you go to the rural America, they will tell you. And and I even think I even think that the first female president of this country will be a Republican. It won't even be a Democrat. Because the Democrats, the way they the way they well, let me not go into that, but I, I, I have a feeling that this, the first female president of this country will probably be a, a Republican. And it will, it will, um, it will take 
it will be a long time before it, it, before the Republican will put up a woman to run as president. I can tell you that. Wow. So the election the election was driven by the economy and immigration. Uh, just a second, sir. Uh, yes. Rita, let me ask a question to Pastor Somari. Somari, so when you say it was misogyny that led Kamala Harris to lose the election, what you are saying is that Democrat voters are basically misogynists and they prefer to vote for Trump, right? No. Democrat voters are misogynists. But that's no, it, sir, because... That it's means the that voted, the Democrat voted Democrat, the Republican voted Republican, and you have the rural people Trump that won because so, of misogyny. That yeah. means more Democrats flipped over to Trump's side because they are misogynists. No, no, no. they didn't Democrats that explain your point. The independents that went, the dependent went Republican. Please just go online. You'll see a lot of people saying that I voted Democrat before, but I'm voting for Trump this time around. They are misogynists. What you're saying, in effect, is that no. the Democrat Party is full of misogynists. No. no, so so I think, like like you said, like uh, Basil Samari said, it's undertone, one that many people are not talking about or are not maybe sensitive to. Yes, the so one thing the that we cannot. Democrats are misogynists. The under one the thing, the one thing, thing. Some male and some female will be. It's not only male, especially but, the, the core white. But that is not what drove the election. That's why I'm putting this thing on the screen. That is not what drove the election. Let's talk and about what... You know, and you know, I told you, I said I was giving you two. The the loud one and the one that is... Okay, so so let's, let's talk about the loud one. At least the two loud ones. The economy. That's one thing that is not sorted to many people. The economy and immigration. And let's focus on immigration. The economy, we can take that for granted. Yes, the, you know... Economy is better under a Trump presidency. <laughs> Democrats might argue that, oh, economy is even better now by all metrics, but you can't argue with people how they are feeling in their pocketbooks and how they are feeling <laughs> with their bills and, and wallets. You can't Thank argue you that. You can't argue that with people. But nobody can argue that, but if you look at it globally, after COVID, post COVID, the well, entire world is recovering from post COVID. It's not just, even China. We understand that our economy is outperforming any See, other economy. That's 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 probably that's probably the the the, 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 the challenge that many Democrats and Democrat not, strategists have. Not, it's it's yeah. not even it's not even the communication. Is that is like it's like telling us that we are not feeling what we are feeling or what we are feeling is wrong. No, no, no they, they didn't know how to <laughs> communicate it. You can't. You can't. I mean, no matter what they communicate, that doesn't change the reality mm -hmm. that many people are feeling like economy right now is not working for them Listen, and you, for the you, democrats you, to keep saying that oh economy is actually working for you is actually better than you feel that is being in touch with the reality of people and how to convince people to to vote for them excuse me yes sir. excuse me you see that is where they got it wrong there are some things that you comment and say it as it is and probably that's why trump has an edge because he will tell you what he wants to do. He does not care. But demo, And I told you that. The Democrats, they will run this way, run that way. The economy is what it is. You don't come out and say, yes, the economy, as a, as a financial person, I can see the metrics that this is actually, the, the performance is better. But it does not stop my wife from going to the cap pump, cap pump and paying more than she paid during Trump. Yeah? It does not stop her going to the grocery store and spending more than she spent during Trump buying even lesser items. That so you have to be able to come to the people and say, yes, this is where we are. We know, we understand that post-COVID, you are paying more. It, despite the fact that the economy is doing better than it was, but to your pocket, no, we see that you you are paying more. These are the reasons why you are paying more. And you come out to them, but by not admitting and just trying to bulldoze your way over well, it, that's a big error. Th these are the reasons why you are doing you are paying more. And these are the things we are going to do to fix it. To, to this, fix that part. Which, we are which, which they never they never the, did. We fix the big thing. We are going to now tackle tackle the smaller thing. They didn't say that, they didn't even face it. They did not admit it. Yeah. And that is that is miss for them so, so basically they were out of touch and many of them are still out of touch but i want us to focus back on immigration for the immigrant listening today 
who has heard about the threat of mass deportation, the threat that, oh, every illegal, the 15 million, all of them will be rounded up and sent away. There are people now who are moving away from border towns in California, in Texas, because of this fear that, oh, that is where the rounding up might start. There are people moving away from those border towns. How should an immigrant, either legal, most legal immigrants have family members that they are thinking that they want to bring into the country or are interested in coming to the country? What's the reasonable way? What's the level-headed way to move forward in the next two years for the immigrant, either legal or illegal? How should we be thinking about this? A new Trump presidency that has strengthened as the position. This is almost unprecedented in the past 25 years. Have we had such a threat from a president-elect that is going to deport 50 million people? I don't think so. How should an immigrant be thinking about this? Let me start from you, uh, Mr. Fortune. Where I see the whole mass deportation thing is this. I don't think it does not happen. I agree with it. I'm going to weed out criminal elements of the illegal immigration community. It's fine. And that is what I think they are going to do. Not just a mass deportation of every illegal immigrant. Criminal elements. Like, you go to Aurora, instance, and take out every member of Nicaragua, every member of Mara Salvatrucha, and deport them. That makes sense. And I think that's what, what is going to happen. Because look at it this way. Americans are not, they are not stupid. It will be, it will be for you to say you want to deport every illegal immigrant in America. When everybody in the world, nearly everybody in the world wants to come to America. You're going to deport half of America. They are not, that is not going to happen. I don't think that is going to happen. So I don't think anybody should live in fear of, unless you are a criminal. Like he mentioned, I don't know, he mentioned some time ago that um going to deport all the criminals. I'm going to arrest and deport all the criminals and not give them sanctuary like the Democrats have been doing. That is what I think is going to happen. I'm not, I won't come out and say I'm in support of mass deportation of every illegal immigrant in America because that will affect every, every it will affect way too many people. Of course, like uh, Pastor Marie said in our last debate, illegal immigrants, they have their function to play in the keeping the economy running. I, I don't agree with that as a policy statement, for one. Secondly, I don't think it's going to happen. Okay. A mass deportation of every illegal mm -mm -mm. It, it doesn't make sense. I don't agree with it. Did he listen to his interview uh, three days ago? When he might expect to. Pastor, what when I'm saying was asked, is, but in fashion, I don't yeah. agree with it. Okay. Well, okay. he said they told him that it's going to cost so much money, and he said, "Yes, it will cost a lot of money, but we have to do it." We but that's the mandate, though. That's it's that's the mandate. Things. That's the it's mandate the electorate has given him. But it could be a reaction to what the Democrats have been doing: unfettered illegal immigration. Maybe he is thinking that it deserves unfettered legal deportation be a reaction to what the democrats have been doing like i said it's not something i totally agree with to say just deport every illegal immigrant good mm -mm. pastor i tend to agree with you with, with the last point that it will affect the economy rather negatively so i yes. agree with it i'm not going to defend that that's my position if there is anything i would say to your listeners that are immigrants that are here yes trump has the power as the president to do it. He can do it. He does not need legislative action to do it. He can do it. But I will say, if you are here, please make sure you are not cutting corners in any way. Make sure that you are doing everything as the law requires. Because even if they are going to start, they are going to start with people that have held the law against the law one way or the other. Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe that is where it will start from. N number two, that I think uh, if you have a job, see if, especially if you are in a, a specialized field, if your job can file for you. The only people I am really afraid for are the people on asylum because that could be an easy target no mm. but illegal immigrants uh, uh, ileys are not illegal immigrants he is going no, to deport illegal immigrants if on asylum you are not an illegal immigrant oh he 
Listen, uh, let me tell you what I was listening to a pundit. No, you want to speak for Trump. You want to speak his mind. No, no, I said I was listening to a pundit. Did he say he was going to report the Chinese? You remember even the the Haiti thing? You know Haiti had a special category of visa that allowed them to come in temporarily. It's a temporary asylum that was assigned to them. But he said, okay, so the issue was gone and that why should they continue to renew that? So I'm saying, so well, that's... He for was example, going to be still fighting. Now you think of a place like Nigeria, where we no longer have the political issue. Now they, they will ask you, so what is in... Now your country is good now. What is the issue for the asylum again? The people are, our country is good now. <laughs> we are not fighting war. There's something called economic refugee or economic asylees. Well, that, then it's, all the people from Colombia and from Nicaragua will tell you it's an economic asy asylum they are looking for. They run through the border. In that case, they come in legally as, asy as asylees. Seeking, they went to the embassy and they sought, sought asylum and they were granted asylum status and they came in. If you run through the border and then you now classify yourself as an asylee, that doesn't work. It's illegal. Let's just pray that, you know, um, the the country does not become a police state. Pastor, how about? <laughs> Did you see the text that were, that people were sending out the day before yesterday and yesterday, Thursday, Friday? Texts that were going out in Mississippi and all of this. Places. Pastor, you believe that that is a Trump thing? No, I didn't say it's a Trump I'm thing. To, you up to come and pick uh, it's, that's not a Trump thing, but you know, all this rhetoric emboldens people. That, that is something that was done by pranksters to ginger up this exact same reaction that you are giving. Yeah, that, that's what we are saying. That rhetoric like on this the against em Trump emboldens people. Okay. Do Trump is in power. Hey, well, look at what is happening because Trump is in power. Look at what they want to do to black people. They want to make us pick cotton. Ah, come on, sir. We should be we, we should be beyond that. That is a prank. It's a prank. Mm. It's something done by mischievous people. It's got nothing to do with Trump. Yeah, it may be a prank. A prank, sir. But and people are emboldened, and you will be surprised surprised yeah, with yeah. more brazen things now that they know that, you know, Trump is in brazen power. things like what, sir? You, you will see, you will see people, you, you saw how during the last Trump, how many video of the so-called Karen have you seen that where somebody stands and say oh, you are black, you are not supposed to be here, you need to go? You saw it in the last time. People are of it during the year, even this year. There's been plenty of a, uh, a majority of them were things that happened during the last Trump era because people believe that they now have the power and they own the country, and that's oh, what I'm saying. That you will see that so during, now, during Biden's administration, again. whites don't own the country, and Biden is a white man. It's during Trump's administration that whites will own the country. It's the boldness and the audacity to say, oh, you can't come in here, you are black, you don't belong here. You can't enter, despite the fact that this is your apartment. There is one man you I'm live. following on YouTube. Huh? This has happened to him several times this year in his own apartment complex where one woman was always troubling him until he finally made her realize that he's a resident there. I'll send you a link to it if I can still find it. It was this year. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's there, but it's hidden. But That's now people will be bold. I want us to, to draw the curtain on this one and ask what <laughs> is your, what, or what are your expectations for the future? What do you hope the Trump presidency, it's a one-term presidency now, we know that. It's not, he's not going to run for a second term. Do you think that is um, good for him, bad for him, good for the country, bad for the country, what what do you hope or you expect him to, to do in these four years? Um, that from you, the Fortune, and also this this is your closing argument, and then I'll move to right. People are going to hate me for what I'm about to say. I hope that Trump does not make the same mistake that he made during the first presidency. Because during the first presidency, he made the mistake of just going out to look for people who were competent, who were the best hands to handle certain departments, and he brought them into his uh, into his cabinet. Like the first uh, Secretary of State, oh, I've forgotten his name now. Like uh, Pompeo, was it? No, it wasn't Pompeo. No, it mm -hmm. wasn't Pompeo. The chair, no, it is chairman of uh, Texaco or Shell or Te Texaco yeah. or, of the oil companies. Yes. The big international guy. So, he doesn't know the mindset of these people. He just knows that probably the best at whatever he's picking them up, picking them to uh, do in his cabinet. Some of these people come in with this mindset 
and be informed by the media that Trump is a moron, Trump is an idiot. They come there, they disagree with him, and they leave because he's not going to let them run him. Come in for the most part with liberal policies. Even the ones that came in with ultra conservative policies, Trump refused to go with them. Steve Bannon. Bannon came in thinking Trump should just destroy everybody and you know, was like, no, no, we're not doing that. Him and Steve Bannon fell out. How he fell out with almost everybody brought into his cabinet. And uh, it even got to a point where people will come into his cabinet, get their five minutes of fame, leave, and then write a book and make money, get a book deal. Because it was everybody's pastime then to write a book about Trump when you've been in the room with him for five minutes. You have mm. something to say that the media loves. And I'm hoping he will do. He will find people who are personally loyal to him first. That should be his fourth criterion. That's what Democrats always do. They don't employ the best person for the job. They look for people who are personally loyal to them. Look at Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris won't say what jack against the Biden administration because she is personally loyal to Biden. And that's what the Democrats do. So she'll find people who are, in addition to being good at the job that he's going to appoint them to do in his cabinet, they should be personally loyal to him, people who will fight for him, not people like Jeff Sessions who will give cover to people like Mueller to destroy his, his administration. That's one. People who are loyal to him and will do what they are supposed to do for him and for the country. A good example is Barack Obama and um, what's his name now? Black man that was his... Um, Eric, thank you, Eric Holder. Holder came out and told America to its face, as Attorney General, I am the president's wingman. What a wingman is. The one, if, if, if that situation, your wingman stands ready to defend you. He told America that he is the president's wingman, meaning that Barack Obama can commit any crime while in office. As long as, long as I am Attorney General, it's going to happen to him. But the reverse was the case with Trump. He was president, his Attorney General was trying to Draw his administration. The Supreme so Court has given him a lot of power now, anyway. I said the Supreme Court has given Trump a lot of power now. They've given the American president the man, they, American they president, the yes. law. They, they've made, made it clear that you can't. Uh, Robo Land, there's a saying that if you give someone a goat, let go of the rope holding the goat's neck, appoint someone president, shackle him, and say you are a president, but we are going to shackle you. You will do your job as president while you are being shackled, like they did to, to Trump with Mueller. The Mueller thing was a hoax. But anyway, that, that we're talking about what Trump will do. Then secondly, hoping that we drill. We just drill. Drill anywhere there is oil. Mm. Let people drill so that prices will come down. Because you see, the cost of energy is the number one determinant of prices in any economy. That's what's happening in Nigeria today. Sustainable raise the cost of gas, and the cost of living is out of reach for everyone. Uh, in, uh, the cost of gas by killing the Keystone, Keystone pipeline, killing constantly several other drilling contracts. I know that Pastor Somori will want to tell us that we're a net exporter of oil. If we are, we shouldn't be exporting because this country does not have enough oil to bring down prices. Start drilling. If you give on, if you move for unfettered drilling tomorrow, prices will drop precipitously in this country, and you are going to see that happen when as soon as Trump is inaugurated into power. Europe yesterday, Europe announced that the European Union announced that they are going to buy American, going to stop buying gas from Russia, uh, from Russia and from one other country, that they are going to buy gas from America. What is that? That means we are going to make more money as a country. Trump is going to run this country where you run a business. A business makes profit. Democrats run a country to instill their own ideology. And then another thing I'm hoping Trump will do, that to stick to his promise, Reduce anything, anything, in fact, to eliminate anything is gender. How do I put it now? Because the reason is this people don't have the guts anymore mm. to say anything against the LGBTQ community because you'll be called homophobic, you'll be called a wicked, in fact, you'll be called a bad person because you don't agree with them. They are not such a big slice of the American piety anyway. I'm hoping that he will keep up that promise, that he won't back out of it, because that's a very difficult promise to me. Because those people, they are very small, the minority, but they are very vocal, very vocal. And they have the power of George Soros behind them, the billionaire who, who finances every demonic stuff in this country. I'm hoping that he doesn't back away from that. I'm hoping that he keeps up, he keeps his country to that. Uh, his this uh, is on that area. He said he was going to ban, no, he's going to ban the use of, um, use the, the issue of, 
sport, participating in girls' sports, uh, girls using boys' use bathrooms, using schools to implement LGBTQ, what they call gender affirming care, and all that. I'm praying that he keeps to it. All in all, be much better for this country. Some people wouldn't like it, but they are a very tiny minor minority. It is wrong for you to try to impose the will of this tiny minority on the whole country. Because I will tell you, I'm sure that Pastor Somori himself does not agree with anything LGBTQ. I'm sure he does not agree with homosexuality being imposed as the law of the land. I'm sure he would not agree that everybody should let children who are of the opposite sex go into the same bathroom with people's children. I'm sure that he won't agree with the FI being called in to arrest detained parents who protest at school board meetings that what they are doing is wrong when they promote LGBTQ things. I'm sure that you will agree with me that saying that we, we want to ban books because we want to ban books that are pornographic or sexually explicit in nature from children's libraries. I'm sure you'll agree with me there that such books should be banned four-year-old, your five-year-old should not be exposed to, to sexually explicit material in their libraries. Republicans won't say, they won't say that. They will just say that Republicans want to ban books. Why would anybody want to buy, ban books? Books are good. Books are supposed to be educative. They're supposed to be good. But why not focus on teaching our children math, science? Try to focus on teaching our children things that are even adults wouldn't let... In fact, at school board meetings, when parents brought up these books and wanted to read it so that everybody would hear what they are trying to teach our children, they were shut down. They didn't allow them to because they, they knew that it was it Sorry. didn't make sense to anyone. Okay. So with these few points of mind, like we will say in secondary school, with these, <laughs> with this, with these few points of mind, I hope <laughs> I have successfully convinced you that Trump will be a better president for this, for this country than Kamala Harris. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, sir. Professor Samari, over to you, sir. What are your expectations of this presidency and your hopes for the future? So one other thing I wanted to say before I jump on this one is that for those people who are here, whose status is less than where they want to be, they, they, they shouldn't, re if you're not a criminal, if you're a criminal, then you don't deserve to be here, period. But those who are law-abiding citizens, all hope is not lost. There are still some states that have laws already crafted in their books that will help them, which means at least they will be protected from, say, for example, walking on the street and anybody coming to them to say, show me your papers, otherwise you are being deported or be arrested on the street and things like that. So let there be no panic on the streets you might need to move states because definitely some cities some people who want to take advantage and yeah take advantage of the situation and say you know they want to do things even though trump didn't send them they want to just take it on themselves to over you know act these things out we've seen that happen before so if you're in a rural place or in a place where things are you know, really anti, you know, whatever, you know, relocate, plan, you know, just having I mean, your plan to relocate to a different state that has policies in their books that will help immigrants. So that's that. What do I expect? I'm praying and hoping that some of the things that Trump said he would do, some of them, I didn't say all, some of them that he does not really and actually carry through with them. Uh, at least we agree on the mass deportation of just doing a blanket mass deportation. Yes, deport the criminals. Yes, deport, you know, those who are here and they didn't come in through the right way and still and yet didn't stay through to get through the, 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 the process. But, you know, they are jumping the line or when I say jumping the line, cutting, you know, the process and trying to do anything if you are if you are. A criminal, if you're doing anything illegal, then it's all on you. You do nobody want a criminal to be his neighbor. So I hope he's able to deal with anything criminal. You said Trump will run the country like a business. A business makes profit. I hope he doesn't run the country like a business because the last time he ran it, he didn't make profit. He added $8 trillion to the deficit. So we don't want that. I hope this time around he runs it and, you know, be conscious of the economy. I am a business owner and I'm looking forward to a robust economy, you know, 
that will benefit my bottom line. You are, lo- you are looking forward to that fifteen percent tax rate. Well, I, but I am looking forward to a robust economy for you seem everybody. To be making my point. Sorry, you seem to be making my point, sir. No, 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 no. I said Trump will run the country like a business, and I, a business. you said he will run it. I said I hope he does not run it like a business. I said because the last time he ran it like a business, we end, we didn't make profit. We were eight trillion dollars added to our deficits. But there were mitigating circumstances for that. Nothing that COVID, entered COVID, it. COVID is there any president that didn't add to the deficit? COVID. There's, there's no, no president that did not add Biden, to the deficit. Biden has actually reduced our deficit. No, from sir. What? Yes, sir. Go check it. No, Reduced it from what where Trump came. He spent his own money, but he didn't add whatever Trump added. You say COVID. COVID was not even prior to COVID. The tax plan alone, the tax action alone, added over four trillion to the deficit. It was supposed to reduce our deficit, but it did not. Yeah, because because then because COVID did not allow the subsequent economic boom that was supposed to result from that to take place. It's the economic boom that will create the the prosperity that we use to bring down our our deficit, right? And that never happened. COVID, COVID stifled that. That was the point I was making. No, he was told from the get go that that's what will happen, and that's exactly what happened. Okay. When did when did the task job happen? And when did COVID only came in 2020? When did he run? When did he take over the presidency? He had four years. In that four years, if that was supposed to be an instant jolt to the economy, we would have seen the result immediately. In fact, if that result was as robust as he promised, we wouldn't have even felt it. Okay. I wanted to round up your expectations yes. and also so, the future. That, that, that is that. Then drill, baby, drill. Okay, you want to drill? So, right now we are drilling. Let, let me quickly bring this up, sir, because I googled it as you were speaking. Mm-hmm. In two, 2024, the federal government continues to run significant deficits in September, closing out fiscal year 2024 with a cumulative deficit of $1.8 trillion. That is in September. Despite an 11% increase in revenues, that is $1.8 trillion. I don't think that's September alone, probably for the year for the whole of 2024. That's 1.8 trillion as an average mm-hmm. times four would come to about the same thing that Trump did. So is it spending, no. sir? It's not a political no, argument. No, because no, every, not, it's, every president in America does deficit spending. Every president no, is what we are saying is adding to our deficits. I mean, right now we yes, are you said, you said when, you, when you are more by by greater increase a, a, in four yeah. years eight trillion and uh, how much how much has uh, Biden okay. added in his own one, four year. Years one year 1.8 trillion yeah it, it wasn't like that it wasn't like that it probably is actually Biden take don't do a quick Google on something go to the oh, is uh, by this thing and look policy. at it you will see that the system policy.org it's a deficit tracker. It's called def- they call it deficit. So, can they show you website. year by year, year over year, month over month that they have here now? Yeah. Just- so no, Biden's season did not add as much as Trump added. So that is a fact. Then when you say drill, we are already drilling, and then fact check that again. What they are drilling right now is higher than what they drilled during Trump era. Yes, the killing the kicks. kicks we are drilling oil now. And that's why we are selling oil. We sell more oil than we buy. Every country will buy and sell because the derivatives they are and the needs are different. We we are drilling more now. So the fact that they killed the pipe, uh, the Keystone, Keystone pipeline, why? It was because of the uh, environmental impact and effect. It, it, they, they were doing it, studying where there will be collateral damage they wanted to make sure that is reduced and then uh talking about uh books banning i wanted to just run over that then i'll tell you what you see don't em- 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 embolden people to do things that are wrong we are a country we are brothers and sisters we have more uniting us than what is separating us this is just politics after politics we will still sit at the dining table thanksgiving christmas new year and all of that. So don't embody 
people and don't encourage hate. Encourage love. Let's tell us, you know, how we can come together as a country. Now, I must admit, Trump is the leader, will be... Hold on. The extreme, that's, and that's still what I'm saying now. Remove the extremism out of it. It's still what I'm saying now. I've not changed that. Don't encourage extremism. Remove extremism out of it. Bring us together. He, he's going to be the president. When you become the president, bring the country together. Whether race or, col or, or color or bring everybody together. Yes. No, 8.8. .8. That's wrong. You say in less than four years. So... So Trump increasing by six point seven. So uh, Biden increasing by seven. No, no, that that that. That's okay. It. So I want I wanted you to finish your uh, yeah. So answer. what am I expecting? I'm expecting that, and I'm hoping that you know he becomes a president that unites the country, not divide the country. And I'm hoping that all these things he was talking about during the campaign or even this we we have both agreed now that we don't agree with just blanket mass deportation do you want to deport deport the people who are not beneficial to this country who are criminals and same thing i will say you don't don't say i'm going to there are enemies within and i'm going to deal with them or criminalize them no if we disagree with you on policies and politics that is what democracy is all about. Don't criminalize those people and maybe weaponize anything against them. If you say this is what the Biden regime did and you are really convinced that that's what they did, then don't tow the same, you know, path. Do something different that actually brings us together. Because whether Biden or myself, who changed my affiliation to Democrat, likes it or not, Trump is going to be, when he's sworn in, the president for the whole country. And when you are the president for the whole country, it does not matter whether you are a Muslim or you are Hispanic or black, you are the president for everybody. And I hope he will be the president for everybody, uniting the country. And the country is just too far apart. And we, need, whoever is in the Oval Office, we need to bring up policies and things that will bring us together because we are stronger together. You know, united we stand, divided we fall. You know, him being president does not take China away. The aggression of China in the South China Sea and all of that, we still have that. We still have North Korea. We still have Iran. We, in fact, we still have Russia. Okay. And we still have common things to deal with. So yes. let's focus and work together to deal with these things and not divide ourselves within inside the country. I think it has been a really engaging conversation. I know many people will have a lot of things to pick out of here. I liked uh, your closing uh, statement, sir, that you hope Trump would unite the country. Perhaps something that the election also showed is that maybe we are not as divided as the media would like us think. Maybe we are not as divided as the... Because if you see people coalescing around issues like immigration and, and the economy, and different demographics coalescing behind a candidate more than we ever thought was possible. Maybe we're actually not as divided as the media wants us to think. But anyway, I think this has been really good. We can look for another time to dig deeper and talk about foreign policy. It looks like you want to start talking about foreign policy and Iran and, and Israel and Ukraine. But we can look for another time to, to, to dig deeper. This has been really good. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Sir Pastor Samari and uh, Dick Fortune. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.